Gamakatsu SC15 and Wanot. Take some flat wax, Danville 210. Put the floor and put it right back. Go all the way to the bend of the hook. Here we have some Simferfly 15 millimeter plus chenille, or like smaller cactus chenille would work as well. This is just going to build up a little hot spot. Also keep the tail material from fouling. Just get three wraps. You don't want a lot of this on there. This is just to add a little pop of color. red ball right there cut it flat next we're going to add a tail material this is going to be our tires dungeon water silk it's just a softer material it gives it some movement I have to cut them a little bit longer than I might have because I can always trim it down at the end it's going to be about two and a half times the hook length Taper out the ends. Tie it down. Try to keep it on top of the hook at this part. You want to spin to the back side of the hook as you wrap. When you do the fold back, I'm going to wrap it on all sides of the hook, at least the majority of the way, and just push it back. Then tie down. Sorry if it's a little long, you can give it a nice trim. All right. We're going to need crystal flash, just one piece of crystal flash is enough. Take one piece, fold it around, and then just pin it down right on top. Once secure, I want to separate them, pull them onto the sides, hold them in place, and tie the rest of it back. Give it a couple wraps. Before we add too much material, I want to go ahead and bar up this up this tail material. Let's try to add like four bars on it. This is a hybrid pattern but the bars help keep it shrimpy and when you're throwing black and purple you're usually targeting uh, reds and black drum and when I do that I want something that's kind of crabby, kind of shrimpy. Get it down in front of them. This helps with that. Put in some leg material next. This is going to be the wigglers. I don't want one about the same length of the tail material. So we're actually going to trimming that. Same as the flash, we're going to just bend it back. on there. We're going to do the same thing. Let's do the flash. We're going to pull it apart. Hold it in position and then tie these. When you start tying these you want to tie them loose because it'll flare out if you tie them too tight and then tighter as you go forward. 
I like to make sure they're even. And tell material here is a little bit long. I'm just going to give it a quick trim at an angle to keep it tapered. That's going to bring it about exactly where we want. And I want the legs just short of that. That way they don't all become one clump when you're stripping it. All right, now we got some Kraken dubbing. Stuff's just dubbing with legs in it, micro legs, a little bit of flash. And we're gonna build up a little base here for collar material. Just put the stuff together, pull it apart, put it together, pull it apart. So the longer fibers all kind of line up and you can kind of get the material organized. This stuff has a little bit of built-in flash already. We have one piece of crystal, and that's pretty much going to be the end of that. Pull out any loose stuff. We're going to go ahead and tie on one side. Get my finger in there to keep it from spinning. I'm going to actually pull it across the front of the fly. Hold it down the other side. and then tie it down. Yeah, there we go. It's okay if it's a little messy because what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it up with a thread and then as we said in our next material, we'll cover that all up. Right at the end of that thread ball is where I want to put the eyes in. We're going to be using some Spirit River nickel eyes that are 3 16 This is just a good weight for this hook. If you want to use a little heavier to get it down, if you're fishing deeper water, that's fine. But if you go too light, the hook won't flip up. This hook needs to be hook point up when it's sinking. That way you're not snagging on the bottom, dragging through grass, getting caught on stuff. I'm going to tie it in, pulling it back to where it touches that thread base, get a couple wraps, try to secure it by pushing on the other end, getting it really tight. Dab of glue on each side. We're having to be using Loctite Ultra Gel. This works really good, you can get it anywhere. Alright, for the head material, we have this extreme string. It's 40 millimeter from Simferfly. This stuff, you want to kind of try to pre-cut it because you can't really palmer it off of the card. Um, almost, almost double the length of the fly, just under that will be more than enough. Anything extra we can just save for smaller flies. This stuff usually leans in one direction. Um, I actually want to tie it from the opposite direction. So as you palmer it, it flares up a little bit. Sure you tie the cord in first. I'm gonna take the thread all the way to the front. Sorry if it's a little messy. That's kind of the idea with the head of this fly. Keeps it looking pretty buggy. Try to get all that stuff out of the way. I'm gonna start wrapping.
two around the eyes, just diagonally, pull the material back as you go. Just gonna put a couple more in front. Once again, sorry if this stuff's messy. It's part of the way the fly looks. And as you strip it, that material will go back. And if it's messy, you'll kind of want to open up and then close again as you strip it. It'll give it some extra movement, make it look a little, a little more buggy, more crustacean-like. Once we get a couple wraps in there, take it as far as I can without getting too close to the hook point. Sorry, the end of the hook. That way you don't you still have room to add a weed guard. Gotta have a weed guard in this design only because it's meant to be thrown in the grass. If you don't have grass where you live, you don't have to do a weed guard. This particular fly. In this particular tutorial, we'll have one. You can throw it as is, but we're gonna go ahead and add a heavy duty weed guard. I to try to get all this material back with a clamp. We need some Mason Hard Mono in 30. Tie this a good length. Once you have it, I wanna just fold it right in half. We're gonna make a V style weed guard that's gonna be able to be on both sides of the hook point. All right, the way I tie these in is I'll actually just kind of slide it down and tie on both sides. First the front, give it a couple of wraps, nothing too tight. A couple times on the back. And then kind of continue that. Now your, your mono is gonna be sticking up pretty tight, so what I wanna do is pull it down and then the shaft of the hook will split the mono. Now's the chance to get it where you want it before we tighten it down and make it permanent. Push down on it with a scissor just to make sure it's nice and snug against the shank of the hook. All right, now we're gonna just tie them in with little X wraps. This will keep the mono separated and be more effective. This one's being a little bent in, as long as I'm gonna go around it with the thread, just to put it where I want it. I'll go around with it, opposite direction. Okay. I'm going to give them a trim just below the hook point. This will allow them to bend and still not catch on anything from behind, so it's just gonna be perfect length. And I'm gonna whip finish on the back side of those weed guards. Try not to get any material caught in whip finish so it doesn't weaken the knot at all. All we need to do now is just put a little glue right here on the top of this mono so if anything toothy or you hit some sharp rocks, it's not gonna you know, cut your mono or your thread. I have to put it down here in between them too. There you have it. 